Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Kelly, Artistic Director of Theatre Works, Silicon Valley. And it's a thrill to introduce you to a long time Theatre Works Unforgettable, the Tony Award winning Broadway star of Aladdin, Hamilton, and Memphis, James Monroe Eigelhart, who starred in many productions here at Theatre Works over the years as his career grew and finally exploded on Broadway. Welcome, James. Hey, Kelly, how you doing, man? It's great to see you and talk to you again. You too, sir. <laughs> thanks. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we've been friends for a long time, but this is Very the first so. time we've uh, connected through this particular uh, media form, but uh, yeah. it, it'll be fun. Congratulations on your astonishing Broadway career. It's just amazing. But I have to say congratulations to you too. I mean, all the thing you've done with, you know, with theater works and all the many years you've been artistic director. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. So thank you as well. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Many years. I mean, 50, that doesn't, 50 years doesn't seem that long. No, no, really no. Not. That's a lot. Nothing. No, please. <laughs> well, for you, it all began on Broadway, you know, with the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Uh, yes, sir. And then uh, it moved on to Memphis, mm -hmm. which was absolutely terrific. And uh, I seem to remember uh, you reprised the role of Bobby that you originated at Theater Works. So yes, sir. that was... That was really great. To be able to do that was fantastic because uh, I remember um, when Leslie, um, the casting director of Theater Works at the time, called and said, James, you really need to do this show. Uh, I was trying to do another show with another company. And she was like, no, no, you really need to do Memphis. <laughs> well, you went from that on to uh, playing the genie in Aladdin. Um, and that was remarkable. I still remember you talking to me about it, about whether you're first performances in it in the regional theater would translate onto Broadway. And little did we all know that it translated big time. <laughs> and uh, we, had, we had no idea. We, we were hoping and it was so, it was one of those moments where it was like uh, the Disney folks were like, I hope this does what it's supposed to do. And if it doesn't, we don't know. And when it came out and it hit, it was just a, one of those blessings. We knew we had a good show. We just hoped that the audience, you know, got it as well. Well, it was uh, so good that you wound up winning the uh, 2014 Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical. Yes. Uh, yes. And then you went on to uh, the double role of Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. I mean, yes, sir. there it is. There, there's a picture of <laughs> just unbelievable. It's one I, of the best costumes I've ever worn. Uh, well, you just had this astonishing skyrocketing career. Uh, in New York, and it, it seems like you only appear in massive hits. Is that, uh, uh, did all this reflect dreams you, uh, you had, uh, you know, even, you know, fantasies uh, back when you were in your earlier days at Theater Works? Yes, yes, this is what I was aspiring to. I tried to get whatever was the, you know, the top place to be is where I wanted to be. So when I was coming up, you know, um, in college and I was auditioning for shows, I, I knew that I wanted to work at the best places and Theater Works was the, you know, the top, you know, regional theater in, in, the, in the Bay Area. And I said, I, I want to do that. So between that and then also the aspirations of meeting different people from New York when I was at Theater Works who were on Broadway and I was like, that's where I want to get to. So where I am now was always where I wanted to, to be. So I knew, I knew it was going to take a long, I knew it was going to take a while, I knew it was going to take hard work. And I didn't know how much hard work worked, but um, I knew it would take that to get there. And I'm just, I'm, I'm glad it, it worked out. You've had a whole, more than a decade of success on Broadway now. And uh, are there any things that have stood out along the way? Any big, big moments for you? I mean, there's yes. some obvious ones, but. Well, uh, yes, of course. You know, the Tony, of course, uh, is one of the big ones. But I think one of the things that stood out was the fact that um, I have been told and now I've, I've finally accepted it. I've been told that I created a niche for um, unconventional looking actors to be, <laughs> uh, to be, Af to be African-American and to be uh, the size that I am and the build that I am to create roles uh, or wow. to, you know, to, to, to be able to either create roles or take over a role and make it my own has opened the doors for a lot of uh, different shaped people and I have I have people coming up to me all the time saying hey you know thank you well you're all of these shows that uh, you've triumphed in on Broadway uh, you've actually played very different characters but they all had this similar sense of fun and intrigue and joy in them 
um, that I think is, well, I know because I know you so well that that's part of you, but it's also, I think, something you bring to the stage that people have found irresistible. Are there roles that you are, you know, or shows or anything that are still in your uh, imaginary wheelhouse, things that you'd like to do or, you know, are, have there been roles that you've turned down or had to turn down because you've been so remarkably successful? There hasn't been any roles I've had to turn down, but there's, there, there, are, there are some roles out there that I would love to tackle. Um, the, the, the biggest one that I can think of right now is Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, wow. Yeah, the classic show, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber show. I have said this um, to some people, and um, I always hoped I'd be the first black phantom, but then my friend Norm Lewis became that. But I was teasing him saying, I want, I was teasing him saying, I want to be the next black, fa I want to be the next phantom. He was like, you can do it. And when he said that, it, it kind of, you know, planted a seed in my head. Well, before Broadway, there was uh, the Bay Area. Uh, oh, yes. And there, was, there was theater works. Uh, I know you were born in Hayward. You went yes. to Cal State Hayward and um, got in, your start in theater there. Did, did you immediately know you wanted a career in the theater? Was that something that came later or was it just boom, there it is? Well, my, my mom was a music teacher and a singer in church and my dad was an actor in Hollywood in the um, early 70s. And um, then he retired once I was born so he could like, be, you know, be a dad. But I always wanted to be a performer, but I, did, I, I really tried to get away from the family business. You know, I was, I was be a <laughs> rapper or, or a professional wrestler or something. And it was around, it was around high school that I was kind of like, I really can't run from this. This is, you know, I'm actually, I, I have a talent for it and that's what's what I love to do. It, it, it encompasses everything I like to do, singing, dancing, acting. Don't get me wrong, I love straight plays. I've done a few and I have a great time doing that. But there's something about a musical for me that just, it just, pulls at me and it pulls at my spirit and I love it. So I always wanted to do this. I just didn't know it was going to happen probably till around high school, early college is when I was like, okay, this is, this is the focus. Let's, let's keep stepping and go this way. That's great. Well, your career here at theater works was amazing. And uh, I think it covered all at least seven shows. You played here a broad range of characters. Uh, I think the first was in a very wacky musical called bad boy. And uh, you were the very swaggering country reverend, Billy, <laughs> Billy Hightower. Yes. But you also doubled as the uh, B. Listen, that's, I will say, I've done many characters on Broadway and my friends in New York are still, once they see this interview, they're going to be so excited because they've been waiting to see <laughs> a, this picture for years. And if you guys could email me that picture, I would be so, so appreciative because... They've heard about it. Bat Boy was the one that really kind of let theater work, theater works folks know, you know, that I was, you know, something to be looked at. Do you remember anything about Bat Boy? Is that oh, is gosh, that still yes. a, a real yes, memory? Yes. I, I, oh, I've got such strong memory because um, it wasn't a show that was being done a lot. No. So we were one of the first ones to to kind of pull it out and do it. So I'll never forget that show. And, and I remember, you know, Billy, Billy uh, Libertor being our musical director. And it was fabulous. And it was fun every night because what was great about it was the audience didn't know what they were coming to see. And I re distinctly remember I was playing uh, Hightower and I said, Does, <laughs> is there someone in the audience that doesn't want this boy to be healed? And the audience was so into it that someone said, no! And it made me... <laughs> I was the first time I was able to like break character and go, listen, let me fix him. Then I'll come down and fix you. And just <laughs> that happening, you know, the audience went nuts and it was, it was so much fun. No, I think that show uh, was uh, very different for our audience, but on the other hand, it was populated with yeah. uh, Broadway stars and soon to be Broadway stars. A lot of them, um, so in terms of talent, it was one of the most amazing shows we ever put on here. So you were part of the quintet in uh, a, a, a Little Night Music, the Stephen oh, yes. piece. Yes, yes. Um, that was another one that was uh, so much fun to do. Um, just because it's Sondheim and it was, you know, it's not, and it's not one of the Sondheim shows that's like, you know, Sweeney, where it was so, so dark. A Little Night Music was just a wonderful story of people going through life, going through love. And it was something that the audience could latch onto and understand. And what's funny, again, in being in this show, I got to work with uh, Alan Fitzpatrick, who also was a part of the Memphis family when we first did it uh, regionally. That's and wild. 
Stanley Bahorek and I met during the show. And then we ended up doing uh, Spelling Bee together in San Francisco and on Broadway. So these connections that I made at TheatreWorks still were connected in other shows that I got to do. And um, it was fantastic. Um, well, you did, I mean, you did play in our production of Into the Woods, uh, yes. another Sondheim piece. You were the wolf. I was. And uh, I have to say that uh, that probably was the kind of non-traditional casting you're referring to all over the place. Uh, totally. For you. Um, you made the wolf completely your own and uh, it was unique. Uh, and I wanted to share a little, a little bit of footage from that show sure. uh, with uh, Courtney Stokes as Little Red Riding Hood. Here you are as the wolf. Love it. Hello, little girl, what's yours? You're missing all the flowers. The sun won't set for hours. Take your time. Uh, I loved that outfit. Isn't I'm that, sorry. Yeah, that yeah. Purple's my favorite color. And when they came to me and they showed me the design of the costume, I was like, I'm in. I'm great. It's going to be <laughs> fine. I don't have to do anything else. It was so fun. And that show wound up winning the Bay Area Theater Critics Circle yes, Award. Yes. It's awards. You win awards. What is that? Unbelievable. I, 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 I do my best. I really do. <laughs> Well, we really can't talk about you, old friend, without uh, talking about Memphis. Uh, yes. It's a musical that changed our lives uh, in the yes, world sir. premiere production in 2004 here at Theater Works. You were uh, absolutely fabulous. Uh, you played the easygoing janitor, Bobby. And uh, it was the first time that the authors got to see, not only see the show, but got to see you. Yes. And, uh, I have it on good authority uh, that uh, you, uh, your role got bigger with every incarnation of the show. Uh, yes, you know, it did. As it moved, <laughs> yes. as it moved through regional theaters and moved its way up uh, to Broadway eventually. Um, it was amazing. Uh, Bobby winds up uh, in the show singing uh, a, a wonderful wonderful song, a big solo on the TV show hosted by Huey Calhoun, which was yes. wonderfully played by Chad Kimball. Um, but I found some old footage of the show, uh, which is a scene rather than a song. Uh, sure. When you're first meeting Huey, um, and uh, Huey is actually kind of illiterate, and he, but he's got a job as a DJ and has to read a, an advertising piece but he can't. So he asks yeah. you to take on the role and, and read for him. And uh, so I just had to share it. So really one Please. of my favorite all time scenes. Hey, Bobby, would you read this to me, huh? Oh, no, I can't. Mr. Simmons would fire me if he found out. Bobby, if I don't get this right, he's gonna fire me. Bring back old Buck Wiley and you're gonna be listening to a little old doggy named Dougie for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to announce that Drive's grocery store is having a sale on my favorite bird, DuPont bird, MMMMM. MMMMM. Oh, they must be mm mm. Whenever I'm thirsty, I have DuPont bird. Mmm, it's a good bird for drinking. <laughs> well, good for drinking? What the hell else you gonna do with it, huh? <laughs> well, that's what it says. So get your Drive's grocery and buy DuPont Burr, the best burr in Memphis. Mmm, -hmm. end. <laughs> well, thanks, Kai. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What, what's really funny about that, what's really funny about seeing that scene is um, it hasn't changed. It did not change. What was so funny watching it and just also watching the interaction between Chad and I, our energy never changed. We, we, we found our rhythm <laughs> at Theater Works in 2004. And that was the, if you, if you go and watch the, uh, the Memphis, uh, you know, the, the, the film that they did, they, when they filmed it for Broadway, our rhythm is exactly the same. <laughs> That's great. We, we, we were like, no, this is it. We, 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 we found it. 
Well, it moved across the country eventually. It took quite a while. Um, oh, yes. And then finally on to Broadway. Do you have any memories of that whole journey that uh, oh, gosh, as the yes. show moved along? Um, I mean, it, was, it kept changing. I know that. We were so naive at the time when the show you know, with Theater Works. And it was also, it, it was such a hit at Theater Works. We just knew we were going to Broadway next year. I mean, we knew, we were like 2004, 2005, we're in, it's over. And we didn't realize that, you know, shows like that take a, take, they, they need a chance to develop. They need a chance to go through growing pains and rewrites and things like that. And so from 2004 um, to 2009, you know, 2008, I should say, we just, they kept calling us and we kept doing readings. And there yeah. were certain readings where we felt like, oh my God, they messed up the show. There were certain things we were like, oh God, they've destroyed it. It's terrible. And then we did it again. And we're like, oh, oh, they fixed that. Okay, they realized it, you know. And it, it kept getting better and better and better. And by the time we got to um, La Jolla, we knew we had the core of the show. And I remember also um, something I didn't know that happened <laughs> was we were doing the show in La Jolla. We were at a party and my wife, my wife Dawn, sits next to Joe DiPietro at this, at this barbecue party. And he says, what do you think, you know, Don, honestly, what do you think the show needs? And she looked him dead in the face and said, my husband needs another song. <laughs> my, husband needs, my husband needs more to do. And, she, and he looked at him, he was like, really? She says, my husband needs more to do. You, you know he's good, he needs more to do. So we get to the next iteration and sure enough, he had written another tune. <laughs> And I and he and once we sang, he goes, you know, I wrote this because Don told me to. I was like, what? And then when I told Don, she was like, oh my god, am I in trouble? I was like, no, you're not in trouble. But yeah, I said, we got to work on who we say that kind of stuff to. Joe, yes, other people maybe not, but uh, yeah, because of Don, I got the second, I got a second song in the second act. That's great. That is. Well, there's some inside info that not yeah. everybody knows. Not everybody knows. Well, I have to say in a, in a really great moment, certainly for you and the, the cast and the authors, but for Theater Works as well, Memphis won the Tony Award for Best Musical in 2010. Yes. And I, I have to say that for all of us at Theater Works, the most exciting part was knowing that the six lead characters from our original production were still leading the show on oh, Broadway. Yes. Mm -hmm. and where so many times uh, established stars are brought into a wonderful show and it, it changes everything uh, and it's thought to be necessary for success but in a very bold move the the producers uh, went ahead and you guys just t carried the day it was fantastic and there was a moment um right as, as memphis was going to broadway where i had decided maybe i wasn't going to do memphis i was going to do another show and i just remembered jay bernard <laughs> jay bernard calloway calling me up and all he said was, hey, James, just remember, Memphis lives in you. And he hung up. Oh, that's wonderful. And I, I told Don, I said, I have to do this. <laughs> I, have to, I have to do the show. Oh, and what a so, great story. Yeah, so it, it was, and they, Joe and David and Sue and Randy really wanted us. They, they felt that we knew the characters. They felt that we were the ones that embodied the characters the best. Um, they could have gone with other talent. They could have gone with bigger stars, but they really wanted it to be us. And in David's, in David's ear, he heard our voices and that's where he wanted to go. Uh, even as it was making its way toward Broadway, you still found time to come back to theater works for a couple of roles. And, uh, we're really glad you did. You were, you were absolutely brilliant in, uh, Tony Kushner's Caroline or Change. You played a double role. Uh, yes. And uh, I don't know how it looks on your resume to admit that you played a washing machine. But it looks it great. <laughs> there looks you fantastic. are as the washing machine. In, oh, yes. Uh, Carolina Change. And uh, I have to say that uh, that is one great hairdo. Uh, it just, hey, <laughs> listen, it was, the first and, it was one of the first and last times I had hair. And I'm, it was <laughs> fun to experience it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. But later in the show, you became the bus um, yes. and uh, carrying news to the entire community that uh, President Kennedy had been killed. A very, very moving moment in the show. Um, we've got a little footage of that. Here it is. Cool. Whoa, singing the wind down the neighborhood. He is gone now. Go. Dead heat. Oh, blight, November winter night. The prim dead, dead, 
That's pretty is, uh, amazing. That's amazing. You I remember that? Oh my oh, gosh. Oh gosh, yes. I got goosebumps listening to it. Um, what you don't know is um, the guy who originated that role on Broadway is a guy named Chuck Cooper. Uh -huh, Chuck yeah. Cooper was one of my Broadway idols. Uh, when he won the Tony in 1996 for um, The Life, I was mesmerized because almost all the other actors I had you know, listened to on CDs and stuff were tenors. And so for him to be a baritone, but still have that note, I wanted to sing like that so bad. And I got to meet him. And when I told him, I said, listen, I just want you to know that every audition I do, I'm usually doing a song that you originated. <laughs> and he was like, well, I'm glad to hear that. And he calls me young blood and it cracks me up. He's like, how you doing young blood? Whenever he sees me. And he told me, he said, just listen, whatever you got from me, I want you to pass down to other actors who see you. And it's funny because when the genie happened, other actors who saw me came up to me. And there was a moment where I was doing Aladdin and he was doing a show across the street. And there was this kid who walked over to me and goes, I look up to you so much. And I said, listen, I'm just an actor. I'm just a person, but it'd be funny because something, someday something like this will happen to you. And as he was saying it, Chuck walks over and I, he goes, what's happening, young blood? And I said, I'm so glad you're here, Chuck. And I explained to him the situation and he was like, see, it's all one circle. That's one goes to one, it goes to the other. We just keep passing it along. And the kid was like, who's that? And I was like, okay, you need to look up Chuck Cooper and what he's done <laughs> and you'll understand what this means. Such a powerful play. And uh, yes. I'm, I'm, I cried every night and it's just the way it was. Same here, it's so, same, same so here. Strong. same here. Um, it won awards for theater works as well. Uh, the Theater Critics Circle Award for Best Production and Best Musical Production in the Bay Area. And uh, nice. I, I guess we should have known once we put you in a show, just get, <laughs> get the, you know, retire the awards. Here they come. Thanks. Uh, but I have to go back. Let's go back and talk about uh, the genie and Aladdin and that amazing journey for you. Um, if your career wasn't already completely made, it was uh, kind of signed, sealed, and delivered with that show and that role. Um, and uh, of course, it led to the Tony Award for Best uh, Featured Actor in a Musical. I've got a little co copy of you there. There's a little I, shot of I, you. I, I still trip out when, I, the, when I see that. At the awards. But I, but I, I thought I thought just, just for this, I, I usually don't do this, but I thought because it was theater works, I... Uh, I have it. Oh, yeah. nice. That's really so, nice. You can see it, you know. <laughs> That's really well deserved. If I had <laughs> thought about it, I would have brought one home myself to hold up. But there you go. It's, uh, That's it's right. Can I, can I just say how excited I was when Theater Works got the regional Tony? I ran around New York telling people. I was like, guys, that's where I'm from. I was like, I'm from the Bay. And they always used to, to this day, it's a joke. They're like, so you've been here a decade. Are you a New Yorker? I'm like, no, I'm a Californian who works in New York. <laughs> that's correct. That's what I do. And I was so excited and so proud. I told everyone that that, that was my home theater and, and what you guys had done and where Memphis started and Bat Boy. And it was, I was so, so, I was so proud to have been a part of the theater works history. And I had been telling folks about theater works for, you know, decades. I'm like, yo, man, I'm like the regional theater go to is theater works, you know? And it's, it's amazing how many New York folks that I know have worked there and, and loved the experience. Oh, so, that's yeah. great. Thank great. you. Congratulations. Well, I, uh, I just wonder what that moment was like for you. Uh, I mean, as you, I know you did a happy dance up on the I stage. Did. I, you I know, did. I did a praise dance. I couldn't help that, myself. Did, did you know you were going to do a happy no, dance? No. I had no, I, I, I had no idea. There's a moment uh, when I grew up in church and they say sometimes, you know, you get, you get so filled with the spirit that you can't talk about it. You can't sing about it. You just got to move. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I had been praying and working hard for that moment for so long and did not, and was, and was okay with it not happening. Cause you know, I won, I was in a Disney show and you know, Broadway kind of looks at Disney a different way. Uh, they love, it's kind of like a love hate relationship. And yeah. I was like, Hey, you know, if, if this doesn't happen, the fact that I'm nominated I, it really is just enough because the fact that they 
saw a Disney show and wanted to acknowledge it that wasn't The Lion King was something incredible. <laughs> My wife said, would you please write a speech? I'm like, I'm not going to win. I'm not writing a speech. I'm not doing that. I said, I see no point in wasting this time when I could be doing stuff about the other stuff. So it was a surreal moment and I was not ready. <laughs> I was literally coming off the head with the, with the speech because I did not expect to win. And it is, it's still one of the, besides getting married and besides my niece uh, getting married this past year, it is one of, it's the best moment of, of, of my life. But with that, with that award behind you and, uh, you know, a claim and people coming to the theater to see you, uh, you eventually decided to move on to uh, become one of the stars of, Hamilton um, playing Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson. We saw that oh, yes. photo before. And the, yeah. uh, what prompted you to make that decision? Uh, the funny thing is, um, some people know, I, I've been a part of Hamilton for years um, I'm because of the group Freestyle of Supreme. So at the Lincoln Center, um, the concert that the American Songbook that Lynn manuel did, he did Hamilton and I played the original uh, Mulligan. So Mulligan was kind of written around me. And then that same night, Casey Nicola was there and said, hey, Disney's going to, I think, greenlight Aladdin. Do you want to be a part of it? And so I told the guys in Hamilton, I said, look, guys, I know Hamilton's going to be a hit, but let me, I'm going to try this genie thing out, you know, because it's, you know, he's my favorite character. I'm a Disney nerd. Let me try this. They were like, we totally understand. We give, t you, you have our blessing. Go do your thing. So I'm doing the show, you know, success, the Tony happens, and I get a call out of the blue from Tommy Kale. He says, hey, man, you've been with Aladdin for three years you want to come back to the ham fam? Those were his words. And I said, <laughs> I said really? He was like, Wonderful. Yeah. I was like, and I said, well, I don't know if I want to do Mulligan. He said, no, 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 no. We want you to do Lafayette Jefferson. And I was like, I immediately called David Diggs. And I was like, bruh, what's happening? What's going on? He's like, well, I got this thing I'm doing. And I said, you, and they said you, and I think you could do it. I'm like, I can't rap as fast as you. He goes, yes, you can. But they don't want me to, they don't want you to be like me. They want you, they literally want you to be you. <laughs> They want you to do the James thing in this role. And I said, okay. And I did my thing and I found that a couple of uh, days later, they were like, yeah, we want, we want you to do this. Would you come? And I, Don and I talked it over and I was like, you know, this is a good time. I've, I've exhausted everything I could do with the genie. It's time someone else took the mantle and ran with it. Let's try this. And I've had a wonderful time with Hamilton and it's, you know, you don't get many big hits in your life. And the fact that I've gotten three back to back is it's nuts. So unbelievable. I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed and very excited. Just unbelievable. I know it's really a, a demanding show to do. I've seen it multiple times now um, for, for everyone involved. Yeah. Um, is it fun? Is it fun? To do? It is. It is. It's a fun show. It's a, it's a fun show because I think one of the fun things about it is I love the grooves in the show. You know, you can't get bored. The music is fantastic. You cannot get bored with the show. And also it's, it's amazing how it impacts the audience. You know, I've never seen a show. I mean, Aladdin totally hit the audience with, you know, with a brick, but you know, in, in, in a great way, you know, it just made them so uplifted. It made them laugh, made them happy and, you know, sent them out feeling wonderful. Hamilton, because it's such a global phenomenon, people don't know how to react when they get there. They just burst out crying and we haven't even said anything yet. So <laughs> it's fun to be a part of it. It's also fun to tell that story, you know, to tell yeah. the story of what happened with that guy. And also, I don't get to play many villains. And in, in real life, there are no villains. They're just people who make decisions and what those decisions do impact how the world goes. But the way the show is written, Hamilton is the hero and Jefferson is kind of the villain. And so it, it, I asked, could I put a little more oomph in that, in my version of Jefferson? And Tommy was like, yeah, go for it, man. He said, have, have some fun with, with the guys. And so I've kind of been able to put a, a thing on it. So it's always fun because I can see people like hating me and like me and my friend Wallace and also my friend Fergie, who now plays Mulligan. We sit back and like try to find things. The script never changes. But we always, we, we, we discuss backstage, what can we do this like diabolical that we could do to make the audience like want to kill us? <laughs> and we, we come up with things and the Hamilton never knows. He's like, did you guys really do that tonight? <laughs> and oh, the, audience the audience loves it. Your career on Broadway seems unstoppable and I can't wait to find out what's next. Uh, not that next is anything soon, but uh, not yet. I will say that uh, I do hope there'll be a revival someday on, on Broadway of 
one of my favorite shows, Big River, based on uh, oh. the story of Huckleberry Finn. Oh, gosh. And uh, oh, if it if that happens, you need to be Jim. And uh, it would. I, I have told people that's already. <laughs> <laughs> I've told like if it comes out, talk to me. I want to do it. Well, you of course played the role at Theater Works. It was uh, uh, not just a memorable uh, performance, but it really was one of the most electrifying. Um, moments for me uh, in in 50 years of theater and uh, it just was uh, amazing you were a terrific match for Alex Goley uh, who was oh. playing Huck there's the two of you on a raft on the raft and beautiful set uh, from Joe Ragey oh yes um, and the uh, the most important thing I thought of, about the whole show and that would really put it over the top was your your portrayal and sort of summation of the african-american experience of slavery in the mid-century in the 1850s um, and it just overwhelmed me every every night and it brought our audience to tears every night alex and i had uh the moment we met we had a connection and um that young man really pulled a lot of jim out of me and it was fun to to do that with him and what's funny is it was not the first time I had played Jim, but it was the first time I had played Jim and been in a father figure position with the, with the kids that are in my, mm -hmm. in, my, in my family. So I understood it. The first time I played it, you know, I was a you know, young man. I wasn't married yet. And then I got to do it again and I was married, but there weren't really kids around. And, you know, you think you understand what's happening and what he's running for and what he's going towards and what he's fighting for, you know, not only his freedom, but also to be with his family, to find his family. And once you have a family, all of a sudden that has a whole different um, meaning to you. Back in 2009, um, I had a chance to make a short uh, tr video trailer for one of our shows called It Ain't Nothing But The Blues Musical Review. Oh yeah. Um, that featured both you and a wonderful uh, singer named Allison Ewing among a, her. an incredible cast. Um, so not only did I get to say a few nice things about you and about her, <laughs> uh, but we all got to see uh, the blend of emotion and joy and humor uh, that has always seemed to define your work. So uh, see if this uh, clip brings back any memories. James Eichelhart is one, is one amazing critter. He, first of all, moves and dances brilliantly, and yet he's a really big guy with an immense energy, heart, and soul. He's heading for Broadway this fall, going back to Broadway for his second Broadway show, and we're, we're thrilled to have him here at Theater Works once again. Said I'm a blues man. Blues man. Said I'm a blues man. Uh, Allison Ewing, who plays uh, the uh, sort of Patsy Cline, uh, Patty Page uh, girl in the show, plays uh, a, a brilliant, brilliant uh, character. And she's also a wonderful actor singer, most recently seen in Emma. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. That was uh, that that show was so much fun for me because I just kind of we were we weren't we were characters, but we were ourselves. And to be able to bring that yeah. music to light was so much fun. It was raw, it was real. And it was great. And Allison and I, that's, I think this is, that was Allison and I, that was our third show together. Right. We've done four, we've done four shows together, actually. We've done four shows together all, all around the, uh, the Bay Area. But Al whenever, we're, whenever I see Allison in the room, we always know, oh, we're going to have a good time. Having fun and being brilliant uh, seem to be able to go together in terms of your career and your work right. and, uh, and your soul and uh, the kind of person that you are. Um, Thank you so much, James. It's been a pleasure oh, working please. with you and an even better, bigger pleasure uh, knowing you as a friend and uh, as a friend for our company as well. Thank you. Um, I can't wait to see what the future is going to bring for you, my friend. It, uh, it seems uh, limitless, um, but on the other hand, uh, I think there are a lot of people in this country and in the theater world who are eager to find out what other mountains you have left to climb. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the platform to train and get myself ready for this Broadway thing, because without Theater Works, I, I wouldn't have gotten here. 
And I met most of the folks that I still am good friends with because of Theater Works. And I, the show that got me to, you know, be really, really noticed was Memphis. So thank you. And I just thank you for always being there for me. And I will always be there for Theater Works. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kelly.